are working on getting ready for the second Don test on some of the second Don material. On that exam, we want to be able to show the basic kicks and then all the new advancing kicks, the combat kicks, shuffle front wheel, shuffle front thrust, crossover thrust, spinning rear, walking rear, and the jumping kicks and the power thrust kick. Uh, also showing open hand guards as we did on the first Don. We'll be showing the basic kicks and we want to be able to show all the techniques from the first Don and Kata 3. And then these new techniques, and these will be, uh, first one will be Five Claws of Death, Advancing Daggers, and Flashes Silver, and then Thundering Hammer. So four techniques, and then one Kata. Kata's pretty tricky, Kata 4. Um, Kempo, it's called uh, Kata Long 2, or Too Long. And uh, it's a little bit trickier, more angles, but we'll get into that in a video coming up next. But today I'll be focusing on the techniques. On that test, though, we also want you to be able to show us Kata 1 and Kata 2 together, as we will do later on the Blue Belt test with Kata Exercise doing Kata 1, 2, 3, and 4. But for a second Don, just be able to show Kata 1 and 2 together. It doesn't have to be fast, it just has to be continuous. So the first technique we work on is Five Claws of Death. It's a straight right punch coming at you. And what you're going to do to stop it, take your left foot and just step slightly off to the side. So you'll be going into basically a heel toe position. <clears throat> That's going to get your head just a little bit off to the side so you don't get hit. You're going to use that very new idea of the soft hand block, open hand block. Very light, just a little bit to cause a slight redirection so that punch will go just slightly off to the side. So we're stepping with our left foot and we're doing that open hand block. Next thing is going to be a rising block. Rising block will use the chop part of the hand going to come up underneath. You see those two together, it looks almost like a cross, and then the rising block will continue rising up. The other hand will come over to a low guard by your solar plexus, but your right hand, the rising block, will go way up above your head, and then at the apex, at the highest point, the left hand will come up too to gain power, and then you're going to come through in a circular motion you're going to fire two chops. These are going to come in at diagonals, coming in obliquely, 45 degrees. It's going to hit the guy in his rib cage. This will be his right rib cage compressing in on the lower ribs, false rib and the floating rib at the same time. And the reason his right side is exposed to you is when you threw the right punch and you blocked him, that drag on his arm will pull him in a little bit and turn his body. You'll have this target open. You're going to hit in there as hard as you can, and that should stop the fight. Very likely to break the rib, and then that'll collapse on the lung. He'll bend in towards you and probably not be able to breathe well. Fight's over. We always learn a lot of extra follow-up, but that first part probably do the trick. So the timing will be step into a horse stance. I'll do the soft hand block, the rising block. Both arms will come up above the head. And then I'll turn into the bow, fire these two chops. Again, they're coming in from the sides, but also coming down. And I'm using the biggest circle possible, I'm trying to use the shoulder joints, trying to use the rotation of the body. I'll turn into a hard bow. That hard bow is going to add energy to my back hand to be able to do more, more power and break the ribs. My opponent's going to bend in toward me. As he bends in toward me, if I have to follow up, I want to knock him to the ground. I want him to fall backwards. I want his head, back of his head, to hit the concrete and just knock him out of the fight. My goal again is I don't want this fight to last more than a second or two. I want to take him down and get out of there. I might have more problems coming in. So tactically, you always want to be able to stop the fight quickly and escape. Try to get to where you're safe. The so timing is going to be soft hand block, rising block, then a hard bow, chop to the ribs. Then as he bends in toward me, my right arm is going to come up using my forearm. I'm going to be pressing high up against the sternum to push him back. My left hand, my other hand that was here with this chop, reaches underneath. I'm going to scoop underneath his right knee, hook underneath his right knee to gain control of his knee. And I'm going to lift up his leg as I drive into his upper body. I'm going to use my leg muscles too. I'm going to step in with my back leg, my right leg. I'm going to drive him back. 
drive him back and lift his leg up, push up on his upper body. I'll make him fall backwards. Back of his head will probably hit the concrete. Fight's over. I'm not trying to kill him. I'm just trying to stop him. Hopefully this did the trick. If that didn't do the trick, I'm going to follow up right away and take him to the ground. So this is called five claws of death. We have the soft hand block, rising block, chops, I'm going to reach down underneath, I'm going to step in, drive my forearm in, and knock him back to the ground. I'll show you the other way. I have a soft hand block, rising block, chops, grab underneath, step in with my right leg, drive him back, knock him down. You watch advanced practitioners do this technique, you might notice the timing is a little bit different. Rather than being one, two, three, you'll see them where it's kind of like one motion. So right when their foot lands, they're already hitting. So they're doing these motions while they're moving, and by the time the foot lands, they've made contact. That's pretty good. Everything happens faster. Get your body weight coming in behind those chops, so it's really effective. Once I knock the guy down, I put him onto the ground, he's on his back. All I do at that point, my left foot is pretty close to his ear, to his right ear. I'm going to drop my right knee down and it's going to hit him in the solar plexus. So I'm getting down low to do some other things, but also I'm using the knee to get me down low, but also to hit him right in the solar plexus. So I'm going to drop down to a broken bow. My left hand is going to go into a Chinese guard and my right hand is going to rake. So I'm going to open up my hands, do a four-fingered eye rake, very relaxed. I'm going to go right across the eyes. The intent there is to cause a lot of pain take out his vision, right? So if he can't see me, he's gonna not be able to fight. Plus it hurts really bad. So I drop down on my knee, fire the eye rake. And then from there, I'll do another eye rake with the other hand. I'm gonna do four of those. So I'll do my right hand, then my left hand, then my right hand, and then my left hand. So those are four of the five claws of death. One, two, three, four. And people say, why are you hitting him that many times and his eyes wouldn't just one work probably would. The idea of teaching these techniques where you have a lot of follow-up is in case something hasn't worked. Maybe your opponent is uh, not feeling pain because they're psychotic or they're on some type of a drug. You want a capacity built into you automatically to have extra follow-up. And you should stop when the opponent can no longer hurt you it's tactically really a bad idea to keep going because when you have other threats that may be coming in, you should get out of there. It's morally wrong, I think, to keep hitting somebody once they're down. It's definitely legally wrong. You have the right to defend yourself to stop somebody, but if you keep going beyond that, that's like revenge or something. That's a different ball game. It's a province of the law. It's not something we're supposed to do. So you want to engage, stop the fight, get out of there. The five cause of death is a characteristic of our system. It has a lot of follow-up, but it's only there in a very unusual situation. Probably don't need it. Probably one or two things is done. People I've talked to, including myself, who've had to use this training in self-defense, one or two strikes, it's over. So we come in, we deflect, break the ribs, grab underneath, we step in, we drive the guy back, he falls down. Now we take our left foot, our back leg, step in alongside his ear, we drop our knee down on his solar plexus, and as the knee hits the solar plexus, we do the four claws. One, two, three, four. The other hand always comes back to protect your lower body, so we're just trading hands, right? Then after the fourth one, we fire a reverse rigid claw, reverse rigid claw into the eyes. That's more of a direct blow. These were glancing, now it's a direct blow right to the eyes with a reverse rigid claw. <clears throat> From there, if you had to do more, it's very unlikely. <clears throat> what you do is a toe scoop. A toe scoop is where your foot is going to come forward. You're going to use the part above your toes to catch underneath the groin, and you're going to pull through the groin. So all I'm doing is standing up. I'm taking my back foot, just bringing it forward, kind of dragging it on the ground. And I'm catching underneath the testicles, underneath the groin. I'm going to rip through. Catch it, pull through, and lift my knee. That's all toe scoop is. It's just using 
that part above your toes where the toes join coming underneath the groin and you're ripping through that's a toe scoop that's like kicking somebody in the groin maybe times three <laughs> it does a lot of damage and it's going to make his head pop up even if he's in a, in a weird his nervous system isn't responding well his head will come up his head comes up you're going to do a heel stomp and that's going to hit him right in the face your target is the maxilla which is called the triangle of death it's this honeycomb part of the sinuses in the front of the face hit that really hard very painful uh, very likely to cause visual disruption, mainly a lot of pain. His head's going to smash into the ground, and then you got to get out of there. So let's review. It's a long technique. We go block, rising block, chop to the ribs, grab underneath, drive the guy back, step in with your back leg, and then you're going to drop down on your right knee. Sorry about that camera angle here. I have to back up a little bit. We're going to fire one. Two, three, four eye rakes, reverse surgery to clock. Now we'll do the toe scoop. The guards come up and scoop through the groin. After we scoop through the groin, we'll heel stomp the head. From the heel stomp, we'll step back with our right foot. But not straight back, not like where we were. We're going to go back at an angle, 45 degrees. So we stomp the head. And we're going to come back at this angle away from our opponent. And we'll do a cat stance and horse stance a little bit further. And then again, let's get out of there. So hang out. It's really unwise to hang out there. You want to fight like an animal. You want to defend yourself, get it done, and get out of there. So that's five causes of death. Hopefully that'll help you. Let's cover another one. This is the second technique, advancing daggers.